consists of man saved by the power of God. We bless the Lord today. I dare you to shout hallelujah. said this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let us rejoice yes, God. and be glad in it. Yes. Glory to God. Wherever God is, remember this, wherever God is, any good thing can happen. Yes. And God is here today. So that means any good thing can happen yes. Today. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So we bless God today. I want the church to keep uh, Minister Rochelle and uh, Pastor Scott in prayer. They're not with us today. Uh, I believe uh, 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 one is attending a funeral and uh, something came up at the last moment. But we just bless God today. Amen. And we just thank God that uh, God always has a ram in the bush. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Minister Christine today. Amen. Come on, let's give God. And her sister. All glory to God and her daughter. And all of them. Amen. Amen. We just bless God. We, 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 we bless God today. Somebody yes. said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Ah, let us rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes, God. Amen. We honor the Lord. And I'm so thankful today to be married to this beautiful woman. Yes. Right down front. Y'all know she pays me to do these commercials. There's a little side fee. You know that I use for the commercials. Amen. But we just bless God for her today. Amen. I got a message this morning that uh, the Lord has been dealing with me about this message, and it's uh, it's different from anything else I've ever preached. It's sort of different. You know, you've been preaching for years. You can you know you can go back and pull up messages that you used before. This is sort of different from anything I've ever preached before. How many of you know that your past can affect your present? Amen. 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 And I really think that we don't realize how much our past affects our present. My God. And so, we look for healing today when we might need to be healed from yesterday. Come on, right? Come on, Bishop. Yes. Does that make any sense? Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. There are things that happen to us during the course of our lives. Mm -hmm. And I want to I want to use the, uh, this term timeline a timeline, and I'm using that to refer to your life from the moment you're born until the day we die. A timeline, amen? amen? However long your timeline is, there are things that happen to us along the way, and some of those things are unforgettable. Amen? Amen? Some of them in a good way. You know, I remember when we went to Carolyn's and I remember the family reunion and I remember all of those good things. And you know, there are certain hallmark things that happen to your life that you never forget. You remember your high school graduation, you know, your first kiss. I, I remember mine came behind the car. Oh, y'all loosen up up in here. <laughs> I think I was about 12, and I got hit. The girl said, I'm your cousin, you can't be kissing me. I said, I didn't know. <laughs> trying, to, trying to get your little kiss on, you know. 
But there are certain things that happen during the course of your life you never forget, and they actually shape your life. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. But unfortunately, the things that shape our present are not always good. I can remember some bad things. Come on. Amen. We, we've all have gone to some untimely deaths. Loved ones. We've all had our heart broke. Come on. Young lovers. Amen. You know, come on. Amen. But sometimes you end up encountering a tragic situation. Anybody in here has ever lived through anything tragic? Mm. Amen. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Was talking to a young lady, and the young lady said, I don't want a husband. Young girl, 20 in the 20s. I'm, I don't want to be married. I don't want children. Well, why? Well, come to find out, she was molested. Amen. Amen. She was molested when she was like 12 years old by, by her uncle or somebody. Glory to God. And that negative experience from her past was affecting her negatively 8, 10, 12 years later. Even to the point that it changed her view of life. It's only natural for a young woman to want a husband. God designed it that way. But when you have such a negative experience Come on. that you don't even want to do the things that God designed us to do, Amen. I'm here today to tell you that, and y'all just pray with me today, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, is so much greater than what we know. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. Y'all gotta catch this. Y'all gotta catch this. We live in a world with good and evil. Come on now. We're affected by the good, but we're sure enough affected by the evil. Right. Mm -hmm. It's Satan's job mm -hmm. to belittle your God. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's his job. Oh, yes. It's his job to make us feel he ain't all that. Mm -hmm. Or help me up in here. Amen. Come on. How many of you have your God disappointed you? Let me raise my hand. Y'all scared? Y'all scared? There are certain things I thought he showed up would have took care of by now. Amen. Amen. I've been praying about this illness Amen. for years. Amen. Come on. Yeah. And it's still there. Come on. Amen. I've been asking God for deliverance, for healing in this area for years. Come on. I keep telling the church he made the world in six days. Jesus. My Lord. So, y'all just pray for me. So we have to deal with the negative influence that comes from the dark side. And because we don't take time, well, let me say it this way. The negative information that we've heard over the years about our God affects the way you believe in him today. Come on. In other words, we don't realize that he's greater than what we ask or even think. How many of you have ever viewed Jesus as a time traveler? What do I mean by that? Can, can we just have a little talk this morning? Have you, have you, have you, have you ever seen a St Steven Spielberg movie where some kind of science fiction movie where the, the character ends up going back in time and 
going forward in time. Where do you think man got that idea from? Time travel. Our God is a time traveler. Y'all gotta, gotta follow me on this. In the beginning was the Word. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Word was with God. Mm -hmm. And the Word was God. Amen. Watch this. Amen. Watch this. Here's another way you can say that. Instead of saying in the beginning, you could say in time. Because you can't have a beginning without time. All right, amen. All right. All right. Amen. Think about this. This, this. That's what it's saying in Genesis 1. In the beginning, when I created time. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. Now watch this. Here's the thing that blows a lot of people's mind. The book of Hebrews talks about Jesus and talks about Jesus being the creator. Yeah. Well, Wait a minute, y'all didn't catch it. We say God is the creator. The book of Hebrews says Jesus created everything that was made. Oh my God. Amen. Teach, Bishop. Are y'all catching it? Yes, sir. Yet he wasn't born for another 2,000 years. How did he do it? John 1. In the beginning was the word. I told you the answer. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Y'all got to pray with me today. I've never preached this message before. I need the Lord to help me. We are, we are alive and well and sitting here today in this church because we've been redeemed. Yes. What does it mean to be redeemed? To be bought back. <laughs> when he redeemed us, he bought us back. Why? Because we were property of the devil. That's why salvation means to be born again. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Somebody said, yeah, I was property of the devil. You're talking about years. You're talking a long time ago. You're talking about 20, 30, 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Come on up in here. Y'all loosen up in here. That's why the Lord gave us forgiveness every day. Y'all don't look at me in that, in that tone of voice. I don't, I don't know what that is. Y'all just pray for me. The Bible describes our God as being omnipresent. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? He's that he's everywhere present. Y'all yes. follow me on this? Uh -huh. All right, I'm going someplace. When we think about that, we think about that, we limit that to the present tense. Mm -hmm. Here's how we think. He's in China, he's in Russia, he's here, he's in California at the same time. But that statement is much broader than that. The statement is actually saying he's still back in the book of Genesis, in Genesis 1, and he's, wait a minute, and he's in the future at the same time. Jesus says I'm Alpha and Omega, all at the same. I'm trying to get you to see something. Here's my point. I, I got to read the scripture. I got to read the scripture. I got to read the scripture. Y'all just pray for me. Uh, mm. Put up songs. 139, and look, let's look at verses 7 through 9. Psalms 139, verses 7 through 9. I'm here to talk to you today about your Jesus who's everywhere present yes. 
Watch this. He's already at your mistake that you will make next week. Oh my God, y'all didn't catch it. If he's everywhere present, not only is he back there 30 years ago when the young lady was molested, he's also in her future. So, so we got to expand the way we think. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Wait a minute. How did we get saved? He redeemed us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Watch this. Psalms 139, verse 7 says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Mm -hmm. Where can I go? That your spirit ain't, ain't there already. Come on. Hallelujah. My God. Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? My Lord. Glory. It don't make no difference where you go. Can, can, I, can, you think, can you think just for a moment how big the universe is? Science is still discovering new galaxies. Yes, sir. And, and watch this. Science will tell you that the universe never stops expanding. You got to catch it. Catch, catch this just for a moment. When he said, let there be, he never said, let there be stop. So when he said, let there be, that means it's still growing. Yes, sir. Oh, God. Right now. Hallelujah. But Bridget, no matter how big it gets, he's still bigger. Can you, can you catch this? Yes, sir. You know, you know, and we're going to get there. In Genesis chapter 1, let's stay right here, but y'all just flow with me on this. In Genesis chapter 1, I think he made the stars, um, I forget, he made the stars on day 4, mm -hmm. talked about the firmaments, mm -hmm. okay, okay, and the stars give light to the earth, mm -hmm. watch this now, watch this now. You ever heard the term called a light year? Yes. yes, sir. All right. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Yes. Watch this. Science has determined some of the lights that we see from the Earth, that the, the stars are so far that it would take them three to five hundred years at the light traveling at 186,000 miles per second to reach the earth. My Lord. Wait a minute. Catch what I just said. It would take, the stars are so far away traveling at 186,000 miles per second, it would take the light 30, 40, 50 years to reach the earth. Yet when he said, let there be light, the light was here instantly. I'm trying to get you to see something. Where should I go from that spirit? You have never been any place that God ain't. Y'all just pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. We were created in time. Created in time. And there are all kinds of different times. Come on, Bishop. Yes, yes, yes. Watch this right here. Watch this right here. Oh, yes. There is something called redeem time. Yes, yes. Redeem yes. time is the life you live after you've been saved. Amen. Glory. Glory. Come on. That's good. That's good. Watch this. Oh, yes. In redeem time, mm -hmm. there's nothing but gain. 
When your when your life has been redeemed, yes. what's this? Yes. God actually moves death out. In the beginning, mm -hmm. God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. Okay, where was God before the beginning? He was in eternity. Mm -hmm. All right. God is an eternal God. Yes, He is. That's hard for me to imagine. Mm -hmm. Because everything I know has a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a beginning or an end. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Y'all pray for me. I told you I never preached this before. Yeah, whether shall I go from thy spirit mm -hmm. or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Come on, let's move. Mm -hmm. The writer says if I ascend up into heaven, yes. you know what you can put behind the word heaven? Eternity. Uh -huh. He's talking about eternity now. He said, if I ascend up into heaven, eternity, he said, you're there. Yes. yes. Mm. Come out. Glory. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we get so frustrated with life or frustrated, we say, Lord, where you at? Yes. What you mean, where I am? Right. 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 I actually. The, the question is, where are you? Come out. Right. Amen. 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 My Lord. Mm. Yes. Mm. When you sin, when we live the life of a sinner, mm -hmm. we existed in something called unredeemed time. Uh -huh. All right. Mm -hmm. In unredeemed time, you know, you, you, you lose everything. In unredeemed time, the only thing time brings to you is death. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all can follow me on this. Wait for So that, watch this, that's why the Bible says we, we were born again. Yes. Because if we didn't get born again, the only thing was ahead of us was death. Yeah. That's all that was waiting on us. It was just a matter of time, a few years, and we... That's living in unredeemed time. Yes. That's a life not covered by the blood of Jesus. Yes. The Bible says he came that we might have life. I didn't start living until I got saved. You didn't start living till you got saved. Before you got saved, you were a prisoner of time. And everything in time is death doomed. That's why we need. Watch this. Our God is eternal. Watch this. So are you. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Let me finish this. If I send up into heaven, you're there. Mm -hmm. If I make my bed in hell, He's also talking about eternity. Uh -huh. Yes. You're there. You're there. Behold, I love that. Let's roll. Let's roll. Ooh, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, my God. you're there. Amen. Come on, let's go to the next one. Even there shall thy hand, I'm, I'm sorry, go back. Even there shall thy hand lead me, yes. and thy right hand shall hold me. Oh, my God, hallelujah. You ain't never by oh, yourself. Amen. Amen. The only time you're by yourself is when you step out of redeemed time. When you step out of living a saved life. You step back into time and the death process starts. My God. My 
Yes. 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 Well, Pastor, please. Let me read. Let me read the same passage to you from the TPI translation. I love the TPI translation. The TPI translation says, where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, eternity, you're there. Yeah. If I go down to the realm of the dead, also eternity, you're there. Yeah. If I fly with the wings into the shining dawn, that's going into the future. That's what it means. With, with the wings, I'm going into your future. Uh -huh. Jesus is a time traveler. Yes, he is. Thank you, Father. The Lord is the only one I know that can redeem me from my past. Glory. My God. My God. Mm. My God. He's Alpha and Omega. The Lord told me there are people under the sound of my voice today that need to apply the blood to your past. My God. Mm. The reason why you're still hurting today, yeah. the reason why the young lady said, I don't want a husband, is because of an experience she had when she was 12. Yes. So she didn't want a husband when she was 25. That experience was controlling her future, her past. So then, her past needed to be redeemed. My God, my God, my God. Yes. She needed to send Jesus back into her past. Lord, save me from this negative experience that I had 22 years ago. That's influencing there's some negative experiences that's keeping some of us from crossing over into the purpose that God has for us. We can't get to our future because we're still being haunted by our past. Can I just read something? Can I just read something? I, I want to read this to you. There are many barriers that, that keep us from living in the victory of God's promise. The problem is not that they are impossible to cross, but they flow from places impossible to reach. Wait a minute. We can't reach into our past, but Jesus can. Yes, he can. Bridget, he said, I'm everywhere present. I'm still back there when you got... When your father hurt you, when you were a little girl. I'm still back there when that uncle put his hands on you inappropriately. I'm still there when you made that mistake. When that man lied to you and broke your heart. Come on, come on, come on. I'm still there. I'm there. You can't go back. But you can send me back. Because I'm already there. And so this message today, Lord, we want you to apply your blood to our past. And free us from the chains of our past so we can function today. Oh God, let me let me let me read some of the God wants to bless us and there are things that's blocking us. You can't cross over into confidence because of the fear that flows to you from your divorce. You can't be confident today. I'll never get married again in my life. Lord, I give you praise. You cannot cross over into sexual purity and intimate trust because of what flows from the times when you were molested as a child. You can't, get, you can't get there. Maybe you can't get in the, in the happiness because of the death of a loved one. You got some folk today that can't get happy because they experience, they experience loss of a loved one from the past. They experience the loss of a mother. 
may have been 10 years ago, that things still mess with me today. How many of y'all feel this? Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Lord sent me here today because he's going to do something. Yes, God. He's going to do something really good today. Yes. I wrote this down. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Y'all know this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I'm going to be on about God's business. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Can you give me your eyes right here just for a second before you go back there? I woke up this morning, standing, and a sadness came over me. A sadness. And the sadness was because of the present state of the church. Not just this church, but the body of Christ as a whole. Amen. Watch this. God is having mercy on the church by holding Satan back. Watch this. Satan is begging God to release him on the church because he knows the church is not mature enough. I hope I don't cry this morning. The sad state is we ain't ready. We think we are. You think COVID was Satan's best? That ain't nothing compared to what he has. And the church ain't ready. Why? It's still a press for us to get the service one day out of seven. Come on, good shot, preacher. Amen. We think we're doing something because we're getting here one day out of seven. Mm -hmm. I can remember when we had the church and I had a young family. We were in service every Wednesday night, every Thursday night, and had all our kids there. Amen. It ain't no excuse. Amen. Who shall separate you from the love of God? Yes, Lord. The church is not and it breaks my heart. Because if the Lord knew Satan right now, he would kill, he would wipe, he would kill the church. Because we ain't ready. We don't know nothing about spiritual warfare. Come on, Bishop. Nothing. We don't know how to fight. I told my wife this morning, I said, there are certain members of the church. I said, you, Sister Yvette, a few other people, I want to start teaching some classes on spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the church is growing. We got a lot of people out today. But our church is growing right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm counseling with people that y'all ain't never met that's about to join this church. Mm -hmm. And they're full of demons. They're full of devils. And if I'm not there, they're tear this church up. Because the rest of the staff ain't mature enough. And it takes them everything just to get here one day. Forget about Bible study. Some of y'all have grown so uncomfortable without coming to Bible study, you don't even feel you need it. I'm sorry some of y'all women shout today. Yes. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. Verse 15 says, that which has been is now. Y'all see that? Wait a minute. The thing which happened has been refers to the past. But the writer says the past is here now. What does that say? What is that really saying? We don't know how yesterday is controlling our today. You don't know how much of the hurt you're still carrying. You don't know how ineffective it makes you. You're not the champion God needs you to be right now. Because the residue of your past is still in you. Moses was so heavy. Moses was so heavy. Who was that? Was that? Who did he say to hold his arms up? Was it Joshua? had to hold Moses' arms up. Because Moses was the leader. And God said, as long as the leader is held up, yes. Come on, you go, the, the whole church is going to have victory. Come on, yes. But if you let the leader, All right. if you let him get wore out because you won't help him, That's right. and he's praying for you, day and night, but he can't get no cooperation from you. He can't. He gets wild. I cried this morning. I said, Lord, I told my wife the other day, I said, I'm tired. Nobody don't want to come to prayer. We're living at the end of the age. We're staring eternity right in the face. Luke chapter 21 tells us, don't go there, don't go to Luke 21. Luke chapter 21 tells us that this, this generation will not pass until all things are fulfilled. And since the church don't study and the church don't read, the church don't have a clue which generation is talking about. Come on, teach you go to Psalms teach. chapter 10 and tell you a generation is 70, 70 to 80 years. That's one generation, 70 to 80 years. The generation that he's referring to the Luke, in Luke 21 is the generation that saw Israel restored to statehood in 1948. So the Bible says the people born in 1948, that generation will not die before they see all things fulfilled. My God. Before they see rapture, yes. my Lord, my Lord. second coming, all right. tribulation, yes. that generation will see all of it. Lord. My God. You were born in 1948, how old are you? 76? How old? How old? 74? 74. The Bible says people that are 74 are not, the whole generation will be here when I come back. That's how close we are. Teach us, Bishop. If you knew the Lord was coming back tomorrow, would you be living the way you're living now? Would you be as nonchalant? Would you make church wait on you like you're making the church wait on you? 
The Bible says, seek ye. We can't get nothing done because of your schedule. I asked the Lord one time, I said, Lord, why ain't the church growing? He said, you ain't got no help. He said, if I sent him in there right now, Pastor, you'd have a heart attack because you'd have to do everything. Lord Jesus. I'm almost done. That which has been your past is not. Mm -hmm. Watch this. If it hadn't been redeemed. Mm -hmm. If it's been redeemed, it's covered by the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And it can't Amen. affect you today. Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever said this? Come on, be honest with yourself. Boy, I wish I could do that over. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. You've been yeah, I wish I could do that one. I, I wouldn't quite do it that way. <laughs> you know what you're really saying, Lord, if I could go back and fix that? Jesus. You can't go physically, but the Lord can. Yes, he can. Bridget, because he's everywhere present. Watch this. How many of us have, have ever thought to pray a prayer to say, Jesus, go back 15 years to that day I was hurt and fix it? I'm telling you he can go back and fix it. How can he do it? He, he can't undo it, but he can undo the effects of it on you. He can remove the effect. It don't hurt no more. I ain't walking the streets over it no more. I don't have the regrets no more, which means I'm free for God to fill me with new faith. See, a lot of times your past is blocking you from the revelation. God wants to show you more, but you can't get over. I hope y'all get this. Do you know how much we're affected by time? We use phrases, you're wasting time. We use phrases on our kids. There ain't time for that. We use phrase, time out. We're affected by time. But our God is a time traveler. Yes, he is. Jesus is here right now. And he's also at the right hand of the Father yes, at the same yes, time. Yes, 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 yes. And then, watch this. He's in your past waiting for you to release him. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Waiting for you to allow him to redeem it. Mm -hmm. So it won't bother you today. Amen. Amen. We are I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm just about I'm just about done. Just about done. Just about done. Um Put, put, the, put this up right quick. 1 John 2 and 7. 1 John 2 and 7. Lord, I give you praise. Bless your name. I just want to take just a few minutes before we go just to, just to say this to you. Anytime you practice sin. You're living in time. You're living an unredeemed life. Amen. When you practice sin, you're living an unredeemed life and the blood of Jesus is not applied. So the only thing time is bringing to you is loss and death. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever been around anyone who just can't seem to be happy? Have you ever been around someone if it's Tuesday, they say they wish it was Wednesday? <laughs> if it's Monday, they wish they never satisfied. That's an example of somebody living in unredeemed time. Because in unredeemed time, oh, unredeemed time could also be time out of the will of God. God ain't going to let you be happy there because you're not in my will. I'm going to show you an example of this. It, watch this. 1 John 2 and 7. Brother, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the world which you is the word which you have heard with me. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Wait, wait, wait. Bye, God. Let me make sure that's it. Mm -hmm. Let me get over there. Let me get over there in my Bible because I want to make this point. Mm -hmm. I wrote that scripture down quick on my, on my way. I want to give us this before we go. When I say that's 1 John mm -hmm. 2 7. Yes. Got to make sure I get this right. Mm. Mm. That ain't the one I want. 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 Oh, God, I'm going to give you this so bad. Y'all going to have to pray for me. In that passage, In that passage, it talks about, it says, and the world is passing away. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of my father abides forever. Is that is, is that 1 John 2, 7? Is that what your Bible says? Yeah, yeah. That's the passage I'm looking for. The world is passing away. And the lust of it. 15. That's 215? 215. 1 John 217. Let's go there. 1 John 217. Mm -hmm. There it is. Amen. Wait a minute. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. That's 216, right? Yes. yes. All right, let's go, go to 217. Okay. There it is. And the world passes away. And the lust thereof. Wait a minute. The world and everything that represents the world. The world, the term world that represents the unredeemed life. The unsaved life. Everything you do in the unsaved life is, is, is influenced by lust. And God said that thing is passing. It's dying. Are you catching what I'm trying to say? Watch this. You can be saved and still revisit the unredeemed life. Wait a minute, you ain't catching it. Have you ever... You're saved, but have you ever gone through a time where you made a series of mistakes? Come on. You knew it was wrong, but you were just there. And you were there with your eyes wide open. Okay, you went back into, you did what Lot's wife did. You looked back. Come on, Bishop. That's an unredeemed moment in your life. When you're living in an unredeemed moment, everything is fading away. Life ain't coming to you. Only thing time is bringing to you is death. Mm -hmm. But then you repent and you get right back into your saved life. But he that dwelleth 
But he that doeth the will of God, watch this, abideth forever. Yeah, yeah. Did you catch it? Yeah. Now, now, now I'm back into the redeemed life. I'm, I'm, everything, everything is being covered by the blood now. Yes. So that I'm, I'm going to abide forever. I ain't going nowhere. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to get y'all to see this thing. Oh, glory to God. There are, there are moments in our life where we speed up the death process. We step outside of Jesus. It's all right. Am I making any sense? Amen. That thing is passing away. Amen. If you're living in the unredeemed life, the only thing is bringing to you is death. I keep saying, Jesus, doesn't the book of Joel says he'll give everything back to us? Wait, 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 help me, help me, help me, help me to quote that scripture. Joel, the book of Joel, Joel, y'all pray with me today. Lord, send that to me. I need that scripture. I need that scripture. We about to go. He said, I'll give you everything back but the canker worm, the caterpillar. Huh? I'll give you those days back. No, it says years. I'll give you the, oh my God, wait a minute, are y'all catching that? The Lord said, I'll give you the years back. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus, God can add years yeah. to your life. Hallelujah. I wish y'all could catch this. Who should be Am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. He said, I'll give you, wait a minute, I'll give you all the years back that the conquer worm mm -hmm. and the caterpillar Wait a minute, those years where you wasted time. Huh? Those years that you just blew and messed up. The most precious, listen, the most precious thing that God has given to us is time. Time. What are you doing with your time? Watch this, give me your eyes right here a second, we go. Talking to a young lady the other day. Talk, no, that young man we met at the restaurant two Sundays ago. That young man said, I bought my first house when I was 24 years old. Mm -hmm. my Lord. That means, wait a minute. When I was 24 years old, the only thing I wanted to do was listen to James Brown. Uh -oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look how advanced, look how far advanced he was. He was 24. He said, I bought my first house. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Job 2, Job 2, 25. What does it say, Bridget? It says, then I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locusts have eaten the people. He's going to compensate you for it. The creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the gnawing locusts. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Now, watch this. That's talking about material stuff. Yes, sir. Mm. Come on, Jesus. That's good. Lord, have to. I'm talking about material, material. But watch this. He also said, I'll give you the years back. Yes. So wait a minute. Most of us want the stuff. Y'all can keep the stuff. Yeah. Come on. Give me the years. Give me the years. Oh, Jesus. Give me the years back. Thank you, God. How many of you? have matured, you know, you've learned some lessons, uh -huh. but you've matured now, you're in your, you're in your 40s, you're, you've learned some lessons. How many of you said, Lord, if I had this mind when I was 19, All right. Whoa. I would own Irma. All right. I would own right. Charleston. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Stan, give me something pretty. Something real pretty. Let me tell you what we're about to do right now. The purpose of this message, the Lord told me that he's going to release the Redeemer in your past. 
Thank you, teacher. For those of you who want your past to be redeemed, Amen. come up to the altar right now. Just come up to the altar right now. You want your blood of Jesus applied to your past. You want to be free.